Arguing that your data are reliable and valid measures of the constructs in your theory is a challenging task. In this video I will look at the link between theory and data and how that link is built in empirical papers. The idea of the link between theory and data is that our, our data is something that we observe and then quite far from the data is the theoretical concept. And we have to somehow argue that the data are related to the theory. If the data are unrelated to the theory, then uh, we cannot claim that the data would allow us to test the theory. So what exactly is the nature of this link is something that your study needs to address. One way to think about this issue is to introduce the concept of an empirical concept between the theoretical concept and the actual measurement result, which is your data. The idea of an empirical concept is that it is a, a lower level concept than your theoretical concept and it allows you to actually collect some data. So let's take a look at how that approach works in practice. We need an example and I'm going to use, use this example that I have used in the past. In 2005, there are the largest 500 Finnish companies. There was a finding that the women-led companies were 4.7 percentage points more profitable than men-led companies. And we want to make a claim that naming a woman as a CEO causes the profitability to increase. So our theoretical concept here is the CEO gender and the second theoretical concept is uh, profitability or performance. Then we have to figure out how exactly we link those two theoretical concepts to the data. How it works is that we introduce the empirical concept and we have been using this diagram before when we were discussing about inductive and deductive logic. The idea was that uh, we start with a theoretical proposition, then uh, from the theoretical proposition we derive a testable hypothesis that is on a lower level of abstraction. Then we collect some data and we test for statistical association which allows us to uh, make claims about the correctness of the hypothesis and then correctness of the hypothesis. The idea was that we apply deductive logic so that if the proposition is correct then the hypothesis should be observed and then we check if we actually do observe by, by calculating something based on our measurement results. Our focus this far has been uh, on the proposition, hypothesis and statistical association and we haven't really discussed much about uh, these arrows here. So um, now we're going to be looking at uh, specifically what these, these two arrows here mean. And uh, let's go back to our example. So the first concept was CO gender and we need to have an empirical concept that we can actually collect data for. For example, if, if the gender of the CO is the uh, theoretical concept, we could have uh, the result of a medical examination as an empirical concept. That is something that we can observe data for. But that's not a practical solution. In practice uh, we can just uh, use our empirical concept or we can define it as whether the CEO's first name is a man's name or a woman's name. That of course uh, could have some reliability or validity problems because we may not be able to know for sure that uh, a name indicates a woman because some names are used for both genders. Then we have specific names for specific CEOs. Uh, the same thing here, we need to have a concept, we have the performance, that's the dependent variable, the theoretical variable, ROA is the empirical concept here in the example, and then we have ROA data for specific firms. Now the question is, uh, how do we uh, justify these relationships? How do we justify that uh, whether the CEO's name is a man's name is uh, a reliable and valid measure of the theoretical concept. How do we justify here that ROA is a valid performance measure and how do we justify that our, our data is, is reliable? Let's take a look at ROA. So why would ROA be a, a, a valid and reliable measure? We have to first understand what is reliability and what is validity here. Reliability here in this figure uh, is here between uh, return on assets, the, con the concept definition of the empirical concept and the actual data. So do we get the same data again if we collect the same data for the same sample? With ROA because it's an accounting figure that comes from a database we conclude that it is probably highly reliable. So reliability is uh, 
uh, here. And then uh, validity on the other hand is uh, a much more challenging question. Can we claim that return on assets is actually uh, a valid measure of firm performance and how do we do that? In reliability is, is fairly simple to, uh, to uh, argue. So the simplest way would be just to measure the same thing again, demonstrate that you get the same result, then it's reliable. So reliability is not about whether the variable actually measures what it is supposed to measure. It's simply that if we do the study again, do we get the same result. Doing the study again, doing the measurement again is a simple way of doing it. Validity, on the other hand, we have to argue that return on assets is uh, a valid performance measure. So how exactly do we do that? There are a couple of different strategies, but this is a, a non-statistical argument. So it's an argument based on theory and based on your understanding of the phenomenon. For example, we could argue that ROA, return on assets, is a valid measure of performance because that is a performance measure that investors and managers care about. So if, if it's a re relevant measure for investors and managers who we hope to inform with our study, then it's uh, a valid measure. So that's one way. Another way of thinking about it is that uh, the purpose of a company is to generate profits and generate money for the owners. So that's the, the purpose of a business organization. And then uh, return on assets uh, is uh, a function of that money generated divided by the money invested in, in terms of assets. So it's kind of like a, a way of standardizing, uh, taking uh, into account that companies of different size produce different amount of results. So it, it scales the ultimate output, which is the profits based on the company size. So that would be an argument for, uh, for ROA as well. But this is not a statistical argument. It's, it's an argument that this is a relevant metric and it's based on uh, either that we have a theoretical understanding what is the purpose of, of the organization, then we uh, say that this reflects a purpose or it could be made by arguing that that's a relevant variable for practitioners. Either way, it's uh, a substantial, substantive instead of methodological argument. So this is uh, a statistical problem, reliability, and uh, this is a theoretical and a philosophical problem. So it relates to really uh, is this uh, relevant for the readers of your audience and your theory. So most researchers, um, when we do research, we uh, apply the empirical concept as a proxy. And in practice, that means that uh, we simply assume that the empirical concept is equal to the theoretical concept. So once we have argued that this empirical concept has some relevance for the theory, then we uh, use it as a substitute or a proxy for the theoretical concept. The reason for that is that we really cannot measure the theoretical concept directly. So using this empirical concept as a proxy is the best thing that we can actually do. Let's take a look at how Deep House's paper does this kind of uh, thinking. So they had uh, a proposition there about strategic similarity and performance. Then they are using relative ROA as their performance measure, the empirical concept and statistic deviation as their uh, empirical concept measuring strategic similarity. And then they had some data that they used, for, for cal used to calculate this uh, result. Uh, how do we argue that strategic deviation is a valid measure of strategic similarity? The, simply the fact that it's labeled similarly to strategic similarity doesn't really mean anything. The fact that we decide to label something doesn't give it a meaning. So that is uh, called the nominalist fallacy. If we claim that just because we, uh, we decided to name this strategic deviation, it must be a measure of strategic similarity is not a valid argument. So uh, how do we justify? In, in, we talked about ROA in, in the last slide, so that's simple. The strategic similarity, their argument is basic, basically that uh, which asset categories to hold is one of the most important strategic decisions of commercial banks. So that's uh, the argument for why they take these uh, different asset categories into consideration. Then they claim that previous research has uh, summarized these different asset categories that they use for calculating strategic deviation in a certain way and they use the same approach and they just cite the other study for justification. So uh, the way you argue for 
validity. There are a couple of different ways. You have to first explain the relevance of the variables or the data for your theory. In this case, asset categories are relevant for banks and then the actual measurement approach, you either have to justify it yourself or you can say that uh, others have used this approach and others have provided justification. If you do that, you must be careful that you actually check that the paper that you cite provides a justification because sometimes researchers use completely unjustified measures and just the fact that something has been published with the measurement approach doesn't make that measurement approach necessarily valid. So you have to look at the actual validity of claims and validity evidence in published studies when you decide which measurement approach to use.